Hi, everybody. I know that Facebook takes a little bit of time, just a minute or two, to catch up. It popped up on my phone that I'm live, and that's what I'm using to record. So I knew that I was live. I'm sorry if that interrupted for a second there. So I'm just going to give this a second so people can come on. And as you are, um, let me make sure my lights are up, they are. I have this video broadcasting on my computer as well. So if you have questions, hi Carrie, if you have questions, if you want to interact or anything, um, I am here. So let's see, I hope that things are okay because things look like it's lagging just a bit on my end. But I think we are good to go now. Okay, so here's the card. We're going to jump right in. Here's the card that we're going to create today. It's a, I call this cute and spooky. I, Halloween is a fun time to create because I think there's a lot of different ways that you can go to create cards. And I tend to lean towards the cutesy side of spooky. So I used the, um, the Boo Sheet stamp set. That's where this little ghostie comes from. And he is adorable. This stamp set just got released. It's probably been a couple weeks now, maybe two weeks. Uh, so two weeks ago from Miss Ink Stamps, and it's adorable. There's a bunch of different little ghosts, a bunch of different little things that you can have them holding. My favorite is this little boo balloon. I think it's just adorable. So today's card is easy, easy to mass produce, but it has something a little bit special to it. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Linnea, and I have been paper crafting for over 15 years. I started when I was a teenager, and so I've been making cards for a really long time. My life has always been busy. Um, I started when I was in high school, and then I went to college, and my life has never really slowed down. Now I have a five-year-old son, and even though he's in school now, I still have, I, I work, and I, ha I don't have a, a lot of time. So when I make cards, I lean towards clean and simple, but I like to add something special. So in this case, we're doing simple masking. It's very easy. Little bit of stenciling here and down at the bottom here, this is Glitz Glitter Gel. So it's a very subtle sparkle, but it's a little something extra. It's textured. So the recipient is gonna think, hey, this is a really cute card, but look, there's something special there at the bottom. And this is a design that you can easily adapt for any kind of card. You can switch out this little ghosty for a Christmas card. You can even keep the sparkle stencil in the background. Have this be for a birthday if you want to put like a cupcake or a birthday cake here. Um, and then just maybe switch out the color of the stenciling at the bottom. So let's go ahead and get started. I have two stencils here that I'm going to be using. The sparkle stencil and the Swiss dots stencil. These are two of my favorite stencils. They are simple stencils that pack a lot of punch. There's a lot of different things you can do with them and I just love them. So I'm gonna start with the sparkles stencil. Now I have um, some masking paper handy. I'm using today the Gina K Designs Masking Magic. If you want to use any kind of masking paper will work. Um, you can also use tape if you want. I tend to lean towards this because I'm a little bit accident prone. So I wanted something a little bit wider than traditional masking tape. I'm going to go ahead and I don't need a whole bunch, maybe like a three inch tall section. So that's all that I need. I'm going to grab my grid mat here and I'm going to line this masking paper up two inches from the bottom. I just painted my nails and so they have that like, oh, that would help. I'm like, why can't I get this off? Cause I'm trying to take off the wrong side. But I just painted my nails and so they have that like smooth side to them. So they don't wanna work. I'm gonna go two inches up. So one inch, two inch, and I'm just gonna use my grid mat here. I'm sorry if my head is in the way. And I think that looks good. I'm gonna give that a little bit of a press. It doesn't need a whole lot. 
And now we're gonna add my sparkle stencil. You can put this either way, but I think that I, I always tend to put it this way. I like it just a little bit better, I think. So I'm gonna line this up. You don't really have to have this straight because they're kind of random sparkles. I'm gonna grab my purple tape, tape this onto the back. You can use pixie spray if you want. In fact, I will be using pixie spray later on in this video, but this is just going to be some simple ink blending right now. So I don't feel like I need pixie spray at this point in time. My purple tape will do just fine. I have carved pumpkin distress oxide ink and a blending brush. Use whatever you have. If you have dye inks, if you have a different brand of ink, it's gonna work. Totally doesn't matter. This is just what I have. And I'm just going to blend across the top. I'm doing orange because I thought that would go along with that cute and spooky, but you could definitely go with lime green or purple or something. That would be super cute too. And like I said, this design can easily be swapped out for a different design. This would be really cute for Christmas if you did like red sparkles or something in the background. Making sure I got all those sparkles, and I think I did. I'm gonna put my ink on my lid, or my lid on my ink. For those of you who don't know me, I am quite accident prone, and I will drop my ink pad onto this project if I don't immediately recap and put that away. So here's my background thus far. I'm gonna go ahead and clean off this stencil. I'm just going to do just a little bit of stamp cleaner on here and wipe that away. Oh, goodness gracious. Um, I'm also very heavy handed for those of you who don't know me. I ink blend heavy, I stamp heavy, I clean heavy. There is nothing nice and gentle about me and not even a little bit. So I'm gonna pop that away and now I'm going to take off this masking paper and I'm gonna heat this with my heat tool very quickly just because I used oxide ink and oxide ink takes just a couple minutes to dry. I wanna make sure that that's nice and dry so that I can move my masking paper up here and do some additional masking. So careful with your ears for a minute. I'm grabbing my heat gun. It's just gonna be a couple seconds, not long at all. There we go. I just needed to dry that just enough because, you know, adhesives don't like to stick to wet things, including wet ink. So now I'm gonna go ahead and move this up and I could grab my grid mat, but I'm just gonna line it up with the bottom of that sparkle stencil and take a bit of a chance. Now I have the Swiss dots stencil. stencil another really cute one. And I'm gonna spray the back of this lightly with pixie spray. Maybe. Oh my gosh, I heard I missed my box, so I'm sorry if you heard that. Let's see, let's just spray this stencil really quick with some pixie spray. You don't need a lot, just give a little once over, and then that's gonna take just a couple seconds to dry. You don't need a lot of pixie spray, and you just want it to be slightly tacky, not really sticky. So that feels good to me. Then I'm gonna line this up at the bottom of my card. And I have this lined up so that the circles are kind of perfectly going against the bottom grain of my card. I'm gonna give that a press on there. And in fact, I might even, I like to use my brayer and just give that a quick press on there to make sure that all those little dots are adhered onto there. Now I'm going with my black Glitz Glitter Gel. You can see this one's one of my favorites. I love black. My wardrobe is mainly black. I create a lot of rainbow cards, but my favorite 
wardrobe color tends to be black, and especially this time of year, I reach for my black things an awful lot. I'm gonna scoop some of this out and just spread some of this across my stencil. And you could definitely skip this step if you wanted to make this more easy to mass produce or even more clean and simple. I just like to add a little touch of flair. Because my cards are so simple, I like to add something that's gonna make it stand out a little bit. I'm just gonna scrape that Glitz Glitter Gel straight across my stencil, making sure that all of those little circles are filled and we look good. I'm gonna clean up my work surface because I don't wanna waste any of this and scrape that right back into the jar. I have a cleanup tip for you that I will share in a moment. You want to make sure that when you're working with any kind of paste that you go ahead and clean that as soon as you can. You really don't want it to dry on there because then you're going to end up having to scrape it off. And even though you can scrape it off, it's a hassle. So I like to clean it when it's still wet. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to peel back onto itself. If you kind of peel and let it fall onto itself, you're going to mess up your design, which I kind of just did, but that's okay. I think it's going to be savable. You won't even notice, I don't think. I'm going to clean up those edges and then I'm going to peel off this masking paper. Again, peeling that back onto itself. And there's my background. It's super cute, super fun, and a little bit of added flair. I'm gonna set that aside. That is going to be dry by the time I'm finished Copic coloring my single image, or two images I think I have on here. Um, it's not gonna take a long time to dry. Usually it takes about 30 minutes, but because these dots are so small and there's not a lot of surface area, they're gonna dry quickly. I went ahead and scraped any extra glitz off of my stencil so that I can save that. And then you wanna make sure that you take a baby wipe or some kind of wet cloth and wipe around the rim of the lid. See how I have all that on my rim? It doesn't seem like a lot, but that's gonna form a crust and that's going to make your gel dry out faster. So any kind of medium, give that rim a wipe before you put it away and that will help prevent drying out. I'm gonna clean off my stencil pal here and then I have a quick tip for cleaning the stencil because like I said you do want to clean up as quickly as you can you don't have to do it in like a matter of seconds but I wouldn't want this to sit here drying on here for you know five ten minutes I'm wiping down my work surface and then I have just this little gallon baggie with a small bit of Windex in it. I'm gonna pop this stencil into here very gently because I don't want to rip the bag. And then I'm just going to swish this around in here and just kind of work with my fingers slowly and gently. I know I said I don't do anything gently, but I really do try with this because I don't want to puncture my bag and have that go everywhere. But that's going to clean off my Glitz Glitter Gel. And I find that this works better, not better than, it's easier for me because I don't have like a bathroom sink right at my desk. And then I just keep this in a drawer and I'll keep using that until that Windex gets too like dirty that it's kind of not cleaning anymore. But you can see here, I'm just gonna take my microfiber cloth and kind of dry this guy off. And it's nice and sparkly clean. And good to go for next time. So now let's move on to coloring um, my images. I just have two, like I said, and these are from the the Boo Sheet stamp set. So I just have this little ghosty and then this little balloon that he's going to hold. I'm going to try to zoom in my camera. Sometimes 
it gets a little crazy on me and it zooms way in way too fast. So I'm going to try to go slowly so that you can see what I'm coloring, but maybe close your eyes so you don't have to see. I'm gonna try. Oh, it's not bad. Hooray. Okay, so here we go. I have some Copic markers for my little ghostie. I'm going to be using, let's see if I can get in camera, C2, C0, and a little bit of a colorless blender. For my little boo balloon here, I wanted him to be orange to match the background, but it would be really cute if you went with like a purple or a lime green too. But I'm going to be using YR07 and YR04. And then for the cheeks on my little ghostie, I just have an R20 marker. I'm gonna do some really easy Copic coloring. Um, I am not a coloring expert by any means at all. Uh, it's something that I am working on, but something that I'm not very good at. So what I like to do is start with my darkest color first and just kind of go where I have, where I think there will be shadows. So I'm envisioning my light source coming down from the top. So he's going to have a highlight on his head and here in the folds of his sheets are where there's gonna be shadows. So I'm just kind of outlining those and bringing this stamped line out a little bit. So I'm kind of going along the bottom and then flicking up over that fold and coming up a little bit, extending that stamped line and extending that kind of visual shadow that I imagine is there. Then I'm gonna come up underneath his little hand because I think that there would be a shadow there. And I'm gonna come underneath his arm here too with a little bit of a shadow. Then I'll blend out with my C0 marker and just kind of extend those lines just a little bit more. Nothing fancy. And then I have my colorless blender and I'll just kind of go over those lines one more time, just kind of flicking a little bit and that's going to soften those edges. The blender isn't really a color. It's, I think of it more as a color mover. So it's just gonna soften and it's gonna move color around when I need it to. So I'm just softening and kind of flicking out. So that's my ghosty. The only other thing I'm going to add is just a little bit of R20 to his little imaginary cheeks here. So I added some cheeks and then I'll grab that colorless blender once more. And again, just kind of soften that color. So I'm just gonna go over it. And you can see that kind of soften in and it looks more like blush. So he's done. That took like all of two minutes to color him and he is so super cute. Now I'm gonna color this little boo balloon. And again, I'm just gonna go dark to light. However you feel most comfortable coloring, I encourage you to color that way. I encourage you to use whatever products you have to color, whether it's colored pencils, Copics, Spectrum Noir, whatever kind of markers you have, use what makes you comfy. I'm gonna add some darkness towards the bottom. Again, I'm envisioning that light source coming down from the top. So dark color YR07 at the bottom, light color YR04 at the top, and also just anywhere where I have to fill in. And that's gonna finish up my coloring. I'm not good at coloring. Um, it's something, like I said, that I'm practicing at and that I'm working towards getting better at. But also, I it's probably my least favorite part of crafting. I enjoy making fun backgrounds and I, maybe I don't enjoy coloring because I'm not good and so I'm kind of intimidated by it. So whenever you see my projects, they're going to be simple and easily colored images. I so much admire people who are fabulous at coloring because it's something that I'm not good at. And so I admire and I'm kind of a little bit jealous of fabulous colorists that are out there in the world. But I do want to remind you while I'm thinking of it to subscribe to the Missing Stamps YouTube channel because there are a lot of different styles of crafters on the Missing Stamps design team and we just expanded our video team. So you're going to be seeing new faces and new crafters on the Miss Ink Stamps YouTube channel. If you go to YouTube and just search for Miss Ink Stamps, we'll pop right up and there's going to be tutorials on the YouTube channel. 
I think it's going to be about three times a week now. So about every other day, you're going to see a new video tutorial, which is really fun. So here's our little colored images. And I'm going to zoom back out this background. It's still a little bit wet. I can tell because the back feels, um, it feels cool cooler than like a regular piece of paper would. So if your back of your paper still feels cool, it's not quite dry, but it's dry enough for me to work with. I wouldn't want to like scrape across it because it would scrape off, but it's cool enough or it's dry enough rather for me to finish off the card. But I just love that sparkle. All right, so I'm going to zoom back out. Let me I try to go slow so it doesn't make anybody nauseous. Alrighty, I have a piece of black cardstock, or I did because I prepped everything, but it is the skinniest of skinny little black pieces and I might have to cut another one. Here it is, I have found it. It's just a little baby guy. Anytime I do some kind of like a dual background like this where I have a pattern at the bottom and a pattern at the top, or even if just a pattern at the top and it's a blank at the bottom, I like to have a little strip of something going across to break that up. It gives the eye a little bit of a break. So I'm going to add a little bit of liquid adhesive, just going right across here, just a skinny little line. And then I'm gonna add it right where this meets. And I'm just going, I could use my grid mat if I want to, but I'm gonna go ahead and just eyeball it as I line up with the top of that Swiss dot stencil from that Glitz Glitter Gel. And then I'm gonna put something heavy on this to sit for a minute because I'm gluing on top of something textured. That's gonna take just a second to dry. While I do that, I could probably glue Start gluing this little guy together. I dropped that little balloon. <laughs> there it is. So I'm gonna add just a tiny bit, a couple dots of adhesive going along this balloon string here. And I'm gonna kind of make it look like this little guy is holding this little boo balloon. So cross that over his hand. And then I'm gonna grab my foam squares. I missed that one and I don't want to waste it and I'm just gonna put a couple on here I have a bad habit of going overboard with foam and I will try my best to not to so that you don't have to sit here and watch me take off tiny strips of adhesive but I do want to make sure that I get enough on here that this guy is going to be supported It'd probably be easier if I just go one at a time instead of trying to <laughs> double hand removing the adhesive. Sometimes it takes a lot of thought for me <laughs> to remove the backers. I like to, if you ever have trouble removing backers of adhesive, because I sometimes do, I got an awesome tip. Press your fingernail down in the center and it causes one of the edges to just pop right up and then you can just grab it. I'm gonna toss those away. Maybe they're sticking to me. I Everything sticks to me. I'm gonna flip this piece over here, trim off the overhang, throw those away. And then this little guy is just gonna go right here on the edge. Now on my sample card, I used a, a ghostly greeting sentiment. This is from the new Miss Ink Stamps Halloween sentiments stamp set. I have a different one today because I thought then I could send it, it would be just a little bit different. And I'd have two cards that are the same, but just slightly different. So I stamped out your spooktacular. I am going to just kind of flare that edge a little bit, just so it has a little bit of a fun feature. Then I'm going to grab a sticky foam strip. P 
peel that off. And then I'm going to tuck this in so that it's coming out. Like I said, everything sticks to me. <laughs> I'm going to stick this behind the little ghosty and line this up kind of like underneath his hand. I'm sorry if my head is in the way. Just so that a tiny little bit of that black is going to show that black cardstock strip. And there we go. That's it, you guys. I'm finished. I think it's a super cute card. And I think it's a card that you can easily change the the colors of your ink blending, maybe even change up your backgrounds a little bit. Um, there's a, a tiny snowfall stencil from Miss Ink Stamps that would be really cute up here if you wanted to create a holiday card and maybe have like a snowflake here. Switch out these colors, switch out your stencils and your images and adapt this easy layout to be, you know, whatever you want. I'll hold this up so you can see some of the shimmer. I like to add that glitz glitter gel, but again, you could totally skip that step and just go with easy ink blending. But I think it's fun to have that little bit of texture and just that little bit of glitter. And that's it, you guys. Thanks so much for joining me. And thank you a lot for being here in the new uh, Miss Inks pad. I think it's so exciting that we finally have a Facebook group dedicated to sharing our Missing Stamps uh, projects. Um, the design team is going to be sharing their projects here in the group, but we definitely encourage all of you to create with your Missing Stamps products that you have at home and to share your projects here in the group with us. Uh, remember too to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're not a subscriber, you're gonna get a lot of more inspiration. And this is not going to be the only live tutorial here in the group, we're going to have um, monthly lives here in the group. Like I said, we've expanded our video team. That's going to be announced soon. So you're going to be seeing some new faces and some new techniques, new tutorials, new styles, whole bunch of newness and lots of exciting things. If you um, didn't catch this full live, you can definitely catch the replay here in the group. But this video will also be uploaded to our YouTube channel with a complete product list. So if you want to shop any of the Missing Stamps products that I used in this video, I'll have links in the YouTube description. That just takes a little bit to upload over there. Thank you guys so much for being here. I hope that you have a great afternoon. Bye.